this is the unit seven free response question that I shared called repair schedule. And uh, if you look, there's an object made up here called a car repair. All right. Um, we don't really know what a car repair is, but we know that there's two numbers associated with it. So every car repair has two numbers. One number represents the mechanic assigned to the car repair. Okay. So every mechanic has a number starting with zero. Uh, and then every car repair gets assigned to a bay. So if you could imagine like a mechanics shop, they might have like four different bays, like drives that you pull your car into. So you're going to go into bay number zero, one, two, three, four, whatever, depending how many bays there are. Okay. So every car repair has two numbers. One number is the mechanic, one number is the bay. If we have a car repair, we can ask for either of those things. And we'll definitely want to use both of these methods, get mechanic num and get bay num during the solution. We're going to be writing code in a repair schedule class. And sure enough, in this class, there's an array list of car repairs. Every car repair has two numbers. One's the mechanic, one's the bay. And there's multiple car repairs saved within the schedule. Uh, the schedule can never have like two uh, different car repairs where the same mechanics assigned to it or two different car repairs where the same bay is assigned because like you can't put two cars into one place. One mechanic can't be in two places at the same time. So as we create this schedule, we have to kind of keep that in mind. So when we add a repair to the schedule, we have to verify that the repair that's attempting to be added is not like trying to use a mechanic who's already assigned to a repair or trying to use a bay that's currently in use. So when we add a repair, they give us two new numbers. Remember, every car repair has two numbers, a mechanic and a bay. Well, here's a new mechanic number. Here's a new bay number. You're going to have to verify that neither of those are in use. And if they're not in use, we'll go ahead and add this repair to the schedule. Keep in mind that the schedule can only accept a car repair. A car repair has two numbers, but two numbers are not a car repair. Okay, you can make a car repair out of two numbers, which we'll do, right, using the car repair constructor, and then we'll be able to add it to the schedule. All right, so when I write this solution, okay, like I said, I'm going to have to loop through the schedule, verifying that like we don't actually have, you know, either of these mechanics or bays in use. Uh, and then if I can verify that, I'll go ahead and add this new repair to the schedule. Uh, so probably the easiest way to do this would just say, you know, give me all of the car repair objects. I'll just call them like CR uh, that are currently in the schedule. Okay. And I don't know, there might be, 10 car repairs currently in the schedule. There might only be one. All right. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that car repair. Every car repair has two numbers associated. One is the mechanic number. And remember, if that mechanic number matches the mechanic number that they're giving me, then that mechanic is already in the schedule. That means they're busy. So like I can't give them a new job. Okay, so I can't schedule this repair because that mechanic's already in use. Uh, or uh, if I went to the car repair and I got the bay number, okay, there's a method in there called get bay num. If that equals the bay that they're trying to make a new repair out of, then that means that that bay is currently in use. So again, we can't do it. This is a Boolean return method. If we don't add this, to the schedule, we're supposed to return false. Remember when you return false, it shuts the method down, even if there was more iterations. So let's say there's 10 car repairs in there. If there's a conflict with car repair number three or number five, we'll just shut the method down because there's no reason to continue looking to add this repair because we can't add it. We've, we've acknowledged that we can't add it because there's a conflict. But if you could search this entire schedule of car repairs and never find a conflict, thus never returning false, then what that means is you could add this car repair to the schedule. Now, remember, it's not a car repair yet. 
it's it's not a car repair until you actually make it one okay so we have the building blocks we have the mechanic number we have the bay number but you've got to actually make it a car repair how do you make a car repair i didn't know before i read this problem right this is not something that gets taught to you but the constructor tells you the constructor says give me two ints and i'll make a car repair for you okay so i made a car repair i called it rep now i could add rep to the schedule since schedule is an array list i'll use my add method I don't have to specify where it goes. They just said, put it in the list. Okay. So I don't, I don't put like an index there. And since schedule was built to only hold car repairs and I made a car repair, this is a perfect match. Okay. This is still a Boolean return method. So ultimately I have to return true. Okay. And, uh, that's because I, I did successfully add it to the schedule. Uh, I didn't write part B yet, but if we just want to take a peek at part A and see what it's doing, we could. All right. So if you see here, I put in five testers. They're the same ones in the directions. And if you're matching the true and false incomes, then your code's probably working. Okay. So true, true, false, false, true. And that was what was supposed to happen. And again, that's, I just put in the same five testers that if you read through these examples, Okay, then that's that's what you just did in the main method that I gave you. All right, in uh, part B, a little bit trickier. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to create an array list of available mechanics. We don't know how many mechanics they have at this place. Okay, they might have a hundred, they might have a thousand, they might have three. Uh, but there's a number associated with this class that has that information for me, but I don't, I don't necessarily know its value and their example, they're using the number six, but that's not like a given. So there is a variable in the class where we're writing code. Okay. Repair schedule called number of mechanics, and that's an instance field. So it gets initialized. We don't really know how, because we're not writing the constructor, but we have and, you know, just like I used the schedule in part A, which I'm going to use in part B also, I can use this variable because when I write my code for part B, I'm in this class. OK, so I have access to this variable, even though it's private, I'm in the class where it exists. So I'm going to call this variable in. OK, and it's going to tell me the number of mechanics that I have. And so let's say that that number of mechanics is 50 then that means they're numbered from zero to 49. So if you read the directions, they said, you know, you start with zero and you go up to, but you don't include that number. So if the number of mechanics was 10, then they're numbered from zero to nine. In the example they showed you, they're using six. So the mechanics are numbered zero to five. All right. In theory, all of those mechanics are available, right? What would prevent them from being available is if they're in the schedule. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a loop that's going to run from zero all the way up to that number. Oh, I just hit the wrong macro there. Let's try that again. Control V. I'm up to the number of mechanics. Okay. So again, if number of mechanics is 100, my loop's going to run from zero to 99. If number of mechanics is six, my loop's going to run from zero to five. What this loop represents is every possible mechanic. Okay. I, in theory, if there's, let's say, let's say the car schedule is empty. Okay. The repair schedule is empty. Then they're all available, but there's probably going to be some mechanics in the repair schedule. So they're not available. So I'm going to loop through. I'm going to give every mechanic a chance to be available. Right. And if they're available, I'm going to add them to an array list. This array list, okay, it doesn't exist yet. This is the return type of the method. You don't have, sometimes I think students think there's an array list called available mechanics. Available mechanics is the name of the method. Array list integer is the return type. So we don't actually have an array list. The only array list that we have is the schedule, but that holds car repairs. That's not what we want here. So I'm not, I'm not going to return schedule. I, I want an array list of integers. I don't have one yet. So I need, I need to make one. Let's say I call it like max, like, you know, for mechanics. All right. So this is going to be a new array list of integers. Remember it's originally empty. 
I'm going to give every mechanic a chance to get added to that list. In our representation, mechanics are just numbers. So seven could be a mechanic potentially or zero or whatever. Okay. When I'm done, I'm going to return them. Now, how do I make a decision as to whether or not each of these numbers gets added to the list? Kind of like what I was doing up here. Okay. So you give me a number, I could loop through and decide whether or not that mechanic was in use. If they're not in use, I'll add them to the list. I'm not going to add them as a car repair, though. I'm going to add them as an integer because that's the type of list they're requesting for me. They're not asking for a list of car repairs in Part B. They're asking for a list of numbers. But very, very similarly, okay, in fact, I mean, like, imagine here, I'm just going to borrow some of this code. I'm going to change it. But essentially, I'm, I'm doing the same concept. I'm going to, I'm going to go to every car repair in the schedule. I'm going to ask if the mechanic is free. However, remember what I'm really looking for here is a conflict. Okay. So if this mechanic is in the schedule, then I won't add them. But if they're not in the schedule, then I will add them. Well, this is, see, now this gets tricky because I have to keep track of this somehow. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a Boolean. And I'm going to say like free. So I'm going to assume that they're free. But if I find that they're currently in the schedule, I'm going to set it to false. Okay. So actually I want this to say equals. Okay. So if that mechanic is currently in the schedule somewhere, that means that they're not free. Okay. After that loop run. So in other words, just imagine like, You've got the schedule in front of you and somebody says, well, tell me if mechanic seven's free. You're going to look at every item in that schedule for a seven. If you don't find a seven, they're free. If you do find a seven, then they're not free. So if they're still free after you've gone through that schedule, then you want to add them to your list. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to add them in. If, if they're in the schedule, this is going to get set to false and you're not going to add them. I don't really. I, so if you look at my test case here, it says should be two, three, four, five. That's for their first example. Uh, and we can match that. And oh, uh, I'm sorry. It wasn't called M here. Uh, it was called I. My mistake. <clears throat> I forgot that I copied and pasted. OK, so let's try that again. All right, it says it should be two, three, four, five, which it was. So I, that was just, again, I was running the same tester code that was presented on the directions. I also made up just a random test case generator that just threw a whole bunch of numbers in there randomly. And it, I, it's random, so we don't really know what it's supposed to do. But it, if your code's working, you're going to see numbers here, like I said, that range roughly from like zero to 99. So I got three to 95 and there's going to be about 20 or 25 of them, which, OK, that looks pretty good. I think that's around 20 ish numbers. All right. Uh, and so, yeah, if everything's in sync, then that's going to play out. If you're getting a list here that only goes from, say, zero to five then you probably didn't put this variable incorrectly. If you're getting a list that runs everything from zero to 99, like every single number, then it's not working. If you're getting a list that's empty, it's not working. But if you're seeing something like I got here, just some random numbers, you know, two digit numbers, one digit numbers, and there's about 20, 25 of them, then yeah, everything's cool.